Hello, I'm Tony, and today we're venturing into the Amazon rainforest, courtesy of Prime Gaming, ha, who are giving away the roguelite game Tunchi until the 29th of March 2023. The graphics are very cutesy and kind of Disney looking, which hides what I found to be a fairly tough game. It bizarrely reminded me of the old Streets of Rage game. Mostly because you can move left to right, but also up and down the screen as you defeat your enemies. And you scroll right to get into the next area for the next encounter. I think it came up because it has the same problem as that classic game where lining yourself up with your foes isn't always the easiest. It's not that easy to judge exactly how high or low on the screen you need to be to be level with someone else. Unusually for these kind of games, there is actually a story here. You're on the search for Tonchi, which I think is how you pronounce it, who is, by all accounts, not the nicest person. And you're going to battle through the rainforest, using your hands, feet and magic to find them. At which point, I guess you're going to give them a damn good kick in. Along the way, you meet a bunch of NPCs, some of which will provide services for you back at your camp. I was surprised how much story there was. It unfolds as you play through the game and includes comic style backstories for each of the five playable characters. You even get discussions happening around story elements at the camp with all the NPCs and playable characters joining in. It wasn't a bad story, there's plenty of mystery and intriguing characters. Okay, let's talk about gameplay. Hit stuff on screen, don't get hit. That's basically it at the start, because it's a roguelite and your first couple of runs are about grabbing a currency for upgrades so you don't really have much in the way of different moves. There are three meta progression currencies, one for your character's abilities, one to upgrade cores that you collect during a run and one to create enchantments. These all drop from specific areas which can randomly appear as you go through your runs and the entry to which is denoted by symbols above the exit point. Think Hades here with the symbols above the doors that you need to go through. You kind of need to learn as you go what the symbols mean. A couple are obvious. Coins for the gold that you can collect during the run and a big bag of stuff for the shop. But some of these are a little bit more difficult to work out, particularly the ones denoting a core drop. These cores give you abilities for the rest of the run, are completely random and can make a big difference, though often they only work if you're already playing well. A fair few of the core abilities are tied to your stylish grade, basically your D to triple S ranking of how well you are demolishing the forest creatures you're encountering. And they might give you faster speed or lightning strikes while you're an A or above. The problem with that, of course, is that if you aren't playing well and you really need the help that more speed or lightning will give you, um, tough. We don't give no scrubs lightning powers. That's only for the chads. It's a shame that these powers don't help you when you actually need help, only when you're kind of doing well. I focused on the ones that gave me more healing, since that's what I needed most. Cores can be upgraded back at camp, increasing the effect of the abilities and if found and not required during a run, can be converted into the currency you need, which helps speed up your upgrades. The implementation of the cores work pretty well for me. You have the randomness of whether you pick them up or not during a run, but can really focus on making a big difference if you do get the one you prefer, by making sure that one is upgraded as far as it can be. The core upgrades are shared between the five characters which cannot be said for the other meta progression, your abilities. Characters can upgrade these specific to them abilities, giving you more combo attacks, changing your dashing and jumping abilities, or increasing the number of healing potions you can take on a run and their effectiveness, as well as how much mana you can replenish. Only the combo attacks are different between characters. These combo attacks made a big difference to me you can get far more crowd control options, at least on the character I played, which was great. I went from barely getting to the first boss to getting there practically unharmed. 
What I didn't like though were the combos that relied on using the D-pad, which means taking your finger off of the movement stick just to do a quick combo. It felt really awkward for me to use, so I kind of just didn't use those abilities. Regardless of that, the combo attacks add a ton of fighting options to the game, making you think a little bit more tactically in the heat of battle. It works really well because the combat is fast and free-flowing, especially with the air dashing which lets you zip about in a really satisfying way. Defeating the first boss gives you two really important abilities which double your health and mana and give you a decent boost to damage, though you need to pay for them like all the others. As with the cores, my main focus was on healing since I had such a tough time with the first boss. It has four phases, each with different attacks, and there were enough stages before the boss that I was finding it hard getting there. So learning the moves and counters took a while. But now that I know what those counters are, it's an absolute breeze. I think that's kind of what you want a roguelite to be. It's tricky to master, but then not too big a block to progression once you've figured it out. Further changes to the game can be made with enchantments, which so far in my game has allowed me to include healing fountain chances in each level for using that third meta currency. Unfortunately, the healing isn't free, you still have to spend gold to use it, which feels a bit miserly to me. I'd tell you what the Talking Llama offers in camp, because there is one that gives you games and challenges to fulfil, but it keeps telling me to be patient, so I think you'll have to be patient too. Sorry. I sucked at this game for ages. I've now played for about five hours, and I've not got to the second boss out of four, I think. I got really stuck on the first one, so I haven't spent a lot of time on the second level. Though I probably would figure out how to deal with the new enemies after, I don't know, an hour or so. As much as I've enjoyed the flowing feel of the combat up until now, it started to feel like a bit of a chore. I think there's just too many little subsections on each level, with only four or five monster types per level, so it starts to get a bit samey, especially as the backdrop doesn't change, so you're slogging through the same bit of forest for ages, splatting the same frogs on level one, the same fish on level two over and over again, because it's a roguelite, so of course you start the first level every single run. It's a shame, as otherwise it feels like there's a lot here. There's plenty of combos to try out, the combat's fun to play, there's intriguing characters and a decent-ish unfolding story that I mostly skipped because it's decent-ish, not good. There's also a massive compendium of all of the creatures and loads of different stories to fill out. And as far as I can tell, a huge bunch of cores that I've not even seen yet. On top of that, the first boss battle was great. Hopefully that's reflected in the other three. But that might be why there's so many subsections, as the game would likely be over really quickly if it wasn't as padded as it feels. I honestly didn't mind playing this one, despite being pretty crap at it and was rewarded for persevering and learning. However, I can't sit here and tell you I'll be playing more of this game. I don't know that I'm gonna uninstall it straight away, but I just need a break after five hours of playing it, I think. I would say investing a little time at the start to grab some upgrades was definitely worth it for me, but that also is a bit of a grind. What I can say is that I enjoyed my five hours playing this, and if you're watching this while the game is still free on Prime, or if it comes to Epic free, then you might well have the same sort of 5-6 hours of fun. I wouldn't pay for this one though, so it's not really a recommend. It's a grab it while it's free, and see how you go. Right, I'm out of this jungle, so thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.